Hi everyone, tonight we have this 2011 A1278 with no power after liquid damage. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and see what's going on. First things first, we have no green light on the charger and we have no spinning fan, so this board is completely dead. Alright, I'm going to start by checking uh, three very important power rails. So I'm going to check PPBus g 3 ot to see what's uh, coming out on that rail. And then I'm going to check DCN and then I'm, I'm going to check uh, PP3v42 g 3 hot. So PPBus g 3 hot first is nothing. It is 3 point something millivolts. So that's not present. DCN is present at 16 volts. So we do have power coming into the system. And PP3v42 is 3.48 volts that's with inspect that's good to go so we have pretty much all of our main rails present well we have we should be getting pp best g3 hot if we have 3v42 and we have uh, dc in to the isl we should be getting pp best g3 hot so let's go ahead and look at the board view and see what creates pp best g3 hot and what might be wrong on this board all right looking at our block diagram here we see we have our ac adapter in uh, we have it goes through a fuse it goes through resistor and then it goes to U7000, which is our uh, PP bus supply and battery charger. So this is going to be the chip that um, that uh, PP bus comes uh, comes from. And we did check voltage here, and voltage is present. Uh, so we know we have DCN to this chip, but nothing is coming out. So let's go ahead and look at our board view. Let's see where that's at, and it looks like this is going to be right over here so here's u7000 this is the isl6259 battery charge controller let's go ahead and have a look on the system board and see if we see anything obviously wrong with that looks amazing doesn't it well with a quick visual inspection it's no kidding why this thing does not turn on so we have diffuse corrosion around our um, isl6259 uh, this is n not good right here so this trace looks like it might be destroyed and these pins are all looks like they're just burned so we're going to need a new chip. We might have to replace some of the stuff around it. We won't really know until um, all this corrosion is lifted. Otherwise, the board is pretty much unremarkable. There's a few areas of cr mild corrosion uh, that should be cleaned up in the ultrasonic quite nicely. So let's go ahead and get some flux on this chip. And let's go ahead and replace it. Put a little bit of flux down. By a little bit of flux, I mean a lot of flux. Get our hot air. The first thing I'm also going to do is after the flux is all flown around this whole area, I'm going to take off this... Um, overfill on this chip because this chip is definitely going to be um, heated to the point where the solder melts on it and if we leave this on there it's going to lift off the pads and that's not good so I'm going to take this off it only takes a little bit of heat it should peel right off like this and there now we don't have to worry about that that is a speaker amp as well just in case anyone's wondering what that was. Looks like there's another one here. Alright, the solder joints don't look bad at all. Um, it looks like maybe some via damage right there. It's hard to tell. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a bit so we can see. Looks like most of this will clean up with just a little bit of touching up with our iron and ultrasonic cleaning as well. But I don't actually see any components that we need to replace around here. Um, we could reuse the original solder on the ISL. It's always kind of nice to do that because it looks like factory if we do. Uh, we'll just touch up some of these components with our iron, and uh, this board should work. So let's grab our new ISL from the reel. Put just a little bit of flux down.
Just touching up these uh, probe points to ensure they're nice and connected. We'll do these right here too for current sensing because these are common to uh, burn because of the voltage that's going through them. And that looks good. So now the moment of truth. Let's actually, and uh, looks like this ran away. So yeah, this little chip right here blew away uh, when we must have been soldering the chip. So we will grab a replacement for one of these. That's probably a speaker amp, just like this other one right here. Not going to worry about that right now, but I want to see if this board actually turns on. So let's see if we made any progress here. So let's plug in a charger. Get a green light. That is a green light. And this is a spinning fan. So this should be fixed. However, we're not done yet because speaker amp decided to grow wings and fly away. So let's go ahead and put a new speaker amp on. Gotta love it when silicon chips decide to grow wings and fly off the board. Let's make sure there's no bridges on that. And it looks pretty good. All right, and just to show you guys that PP bus is now present. So let's measure now. And we're at 12.63 volts, which is perfect. Um, it's a little bit on the high side, but that's only because we have flux on the ISL6259. Um, anytime we have flux on that circuit, it likes to act, uh, um, act funny. So once the board is ultrasonic, that'll be good to go. Now I'm going to show you guys that it does boot into an operating system. All right, as you can see here, we are booted into macOS fully. Um, everything seems to be working fine here. So that's about it uh, for this one. Just to recap, we replaced our um, ISL6259, which is responsible for uh, setting up PPBus G3 hot and charging the battery and doing a few other things. Um, so replace that, cleaned up that area. We'll run it through the ultrasonic cleaner and do some stress testing. And this is all set to go. So thank you, for, uh, thank you very much for watching.